quite often when I'm trying to think of what my next video idea is going to be, I go to my community. So I go to my YouTube channel and I go to my Discord and I see who's asking questions about what. So if you guys don't think that I read every single comment on every single video that I've ever done, think again, because I do. Everything you say on those comments, I read every single one. So if you have something that you're struggling with, of course, leave a comment on any single one of the videos that I've done. Or of course, you can message me directly on Discord. I can be making all sorts of videos, but if my videos aren't on the topics that you guys need help with, then what's the point? I know it quite often seems like I'm going directly back to the basics, which is how to set up a Rust server. But being that that's the foundation of what this channel is built on, if I come across something that I think you guys need to see, then of course, that's what I'm going to want to show you. And I happened to recently come across, apparently this tool actually just came out a couple of days ago. So today is December 2nd. This came out just this pre previous Saturday. So in the grand scheme of things, this is relatively new. It's called the Rust server tool and it's available from codefling.com. I'll put a link to it in the video description down below. And because I just recently did a video on a Rust server tool, I don't want to take anything away from that. This isn't the type of situation where I found something that's better. It's just another tool that does the same thing. What might work really well for one person might not work very well for the next person. So if I can give you a whole bunch of different options to pick from, obviously you'll pick the one that works best for you. But today I'm going to do things a little bit differently. So I just recently came across this tool, I didn't even know it existed. And instead of previewing it and learning all about it, I'm actually going to do it on this video. So I've never installed this tool before. I've never used it before. So you guys are going to experience exactly what you would experience if you decided to use this tool. Hey everybody, welcome back to Rust Admin Academy, where I teach you guys the very best tips and tricks to owning and operating a successful Rust server. On this channel, I do a lot of plugin reviews and tutorials to hopefully show you the different things that you can do on your servers to make your server stand in the crowd of the thousands of different servers that are already out there. So if you're brand new to the channel, consider subscribing so that you stay up to date on everything that we're working on. And of course, as always, if you take any value out of this video, do me a favor and hit that thumbs up for me. All right, let's get into Rust Server Tool from Codeflame. So if you follow the link in the video description down below, it's going to take you directly to this page right here. Quickly scanning through, having a look at the change log, it would appear as though this tool was released on November 21st, not last Saturday, unless last Saturday was the 21st. No, it definitely wasn't. And I'm kind of surprised to see that there's only 52 people that have downloaded it and 441 people that are watching it. Just an interesting point. I find that a little bit strange. So anyways, we're going to click on the green download button. And we're going to let it download to my computer. Once we have our downloaded zip file, of course, we're going to extract it and we're going to extract it right to this same location right here, just like that. And I'm assuming once we open this up, oh, it is an executable. It's not actually a batch file. That's cool. I can definitely work with that. So we're going to run this file. I've never installed this tool before. I have no idea what this is going to look like, but I did read through the documentation and it does say to run it as administrator. So we're going to right click and run as as administrator. Of course, it's going to ask us if we actually want to do that. And we're going to click on yes, of course. And there we go. Here's our Rust server tool looks fairly standard. We've seen something similar like this in the past. All right, so I'm just going to quickly go through and I'm going to start filling out some of these fields here and I'll be back with you in just one second. For server tags, it appears like we can drop down this menu right here and we can put in vanilla and soft core and whatever else it is that we're going to be doing. It's kind of nice. The developer of this tool has actually set it up so that we can just write an in description. We don't have to worry about backslash N. So I've intentionally put all of that information on three different lines, even though it would definitely would have fit on one just to see what happens and see what the tool actually does with it. So we're going to save that description. All right. So that looks like a fairly basic setup. We've got our server title. We've got our server name. We've got our description. We've got the tags that we want to use. We've got our server URL. We've got a header image there. We've picked our map size. We've put in a random map seed. You can put in whatever you want there, or you can go to rustmaps.com and you can select a specific seed if you'd like. Put in our Archon password. Obviously, that's not going to be my real password, but whatever. Server port, Archon port, and the app port is definable in this tool, which is great. And then we can also select the game mode whether it's going to be normal or soft core, because those are the only two that are currently available. If we click on the custom map, if we're using a custom map, obviously you would toggle this on right there. It would then prompt you if you want to install Oxide. And what happens if we click on edit maps? Let's have a look. So it's obviously looking for any previous map saves that we might have had on this server, which I have none. And it also seems like maybe you can put the address of a custom map location in there as well. So if you're hosting it on Dropbox or whatever, it looks like you can put your link in here for your map map and the server tool will install your map from that location. That's just an assumption though. I don't know that for sure. Last map wipe not found because obviously we've never done this before. And then let's save this config. Config has been saved. Let's go to the installer and see what that does. Okay. So we can install or update the server. We can verify the server files, which is cool. We can install or update Oxide. We can install or update the Rust edit DLL. And we can also install or update the Discord extension, which is all really great stuff. These are the basics of 
what you're going to need or what you might need to run a Rust server. If you're using a custom map, of course, you would want to have the Rust edit extension installed. Wipe manager. We can select which items we want to delete when we wipe. Also very cool. Obviously, most often you would just do a full wipe unless you're not doing blueprint wipes, in which case you wouldn't do that. You could do everything else. I'd be cautious about this right here, the oxide data. I'd be curious to know if it just deletes everything in the data folder because that can be super bad because you would lose all of your copy paste saves. You would lose all of your kits. Uh, that's interesting. So I'm actually going to probably test that off camera because I'm really curious about that. And then of course we have some contact information for the developer, the website, the discord, and obviously the developer's name. So in the installer, let's go to install update server and see what happens here. Oh, I got to move this over to this screen and we've all seen this screen before. So this is obviously steam CMD and it's down Loading all the files that are required for a Rust server. So we'll just give that a couple of minutes and I'll check back with you as soon as that's done. Now, I don't know if you guys can see this because the writing is a little bit small on my screen right now. A lot of people are getting this warning. Please use force install DIR before log on. I've tested this both ways and I've still been able to be successful with this the old way if you're using my old manual methods of installing Rust servers. But I have done it this way too, the way they're suggesting it. So you do, you define the directory of where your Rust server is going to go and then you log in anonymously and then you go ahead with your app update. I've tried it both ways. Both ways still work. I'm not sure what Steam CMD did there or why. I can't find any documentation on that, but just know that it's not really that big of a deal. And then as soon as the tool is done installing all of the files that are required for the server, it just automatically shuts down Steam CMD. So let's go ahead and install Oxide and see what happens there. Installation complete. Very good. And then we should be able to go back to server config and let's just click on start server and see what happens. And one thing worth noting while we're waiting for that to boot up, it did change this red X to a green check mark showing that Oxide is actually installed. Kind of a nice visual. And there we go. Just like that, our server is up and running in a matter of minutes. So as I'm sure you can imagine, I do actually really like this tool. It's fast. It's easy. It takes all of the guesswork out. And this tool basically renders my four most viewed videos on YouTube useless because why would anybody do it manually when you can do it all using this tool right here so from this point anybody on my local network will be able to join this server if i wanted this server to be publicly accessible of course i would need to go ahead and deal with my port forwarding for the specific ports that i defined in this startup tool server port is 28015 archon port is 28016 and this application allows us to define the app port at 28017 if you do need help with your port forwarding so that you can have your friends or just people from all around the world join your server watch this video in the top right hand corner it goes over everything that you need to know about port forwarding so once your server is all up and running and you actually want to join your server you go into your f1 console inside your rust game and you type client dot connect space localhost colon 28015 why 28015 because that's the port that we defined in our startup tool and there we go. We're loaded into our brand new server. So of course, the first thing anybody wants to do when they first get their first server set up is they want to be able to fly around and they want to be able to spawn items in the F1 menu. But you can't do that right off the bat. The server needs to know that you're the owner of the server. So we go back to the actual server console that we have running in the background and we just grab our Steam64 ID and we type in owner ID and then we can post it in our Steam64 ID and then we can put in a name there if we wanted to. If you do, you put it in quotations and then you can and also put in a reason also put that in quotations we're just going to put in developer in there and then we hit enter it says owner has been added blah 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 and then we're going to do write cfg to write this owner me to the config for the server therefore if the server reboots or is restarted for whatever reason it's automatically going to know that i'm still the owner the next time i log in so, okay, great. Now we should be able to spawn things in, right? Nope. Guess what? Still can't. Once you've written yourself as the owner of the server, you still need to log out and log back in. And before I actually disconnect from this server to do that, when you're logging into a local host server, you might find that it says, in fact, you probably will find that it says Amsterdam 2 and that these numbers don't make any sense and the server description does not make any sense at all. That's okay. It's just a byproduct of you using the local host connection command. And as you can see here, I don't have a disconnect button down there. So let's just go into our console and type in disconnect. And then once we're actually disconnected from the server, we can, of course, connect again. And as long as you've done everything correctly, when you do reconnect to the server, you'll see your name look a little bit differently. It says that you're logging in with auth level two, which is exactly what my console is saying right there. And of course, we go back in game and now 
now we can go to the spawn menu and we can spawn in everything that we want right here. Literally as many things as I want and I can spawn in everything. I have full reign to do whatever I want in this server. But how do you fly around? The actual technical definition of being able to fly around is called no clipping. No clipping is a command that we can use in the console. We can just type no clip and then now I can fly around. But what I suggest you do, of course, is binding that to a key so that you can just hit a button on your keyboard and it'll automatically start you flying around. So we just go into our F1 console and we type exactly that. We do bind space. And in my case, I'm going to use the letter L. So bind L no clip looks just like that. Obviously, I already had that from before, so I can just hit my L key on my keyboard and it automatically puts me into no clip mode and I can then fly around and do whatever I want. All right, so that's the basics of the Rust server tool from CodeFling. But one important detail that we didn't go over is what did this tool actually create on our computer and can we edit that and where do we put our plugins being how we already installed Oxide. So if we go back to the folder where the Rust server tool actually is, you'll see these files look very familiar. So these are just the basic standard Rust server files. And here we've got our Oxide folder in there and we've got our plugins folder that we can just drop our plugins into and then our configuration folder right there where we can make all of our configuration changes. So this side of things is fairly standard. We've all seen this before. If you've ever set up a server in the past, this should feel very familiar to you. And let's just go in and have a look at the actual start.bat that this tool has created. Let's just open that with Notepad++ and have a look and see what that looks like. Okay, so this is actually very good. This is actually using the syntax formatting that I suggest in all of my videos, which is super cool. I like that. And then of course you can go in and make changes to the things that you need to make changes to, or you can add CVARs here as well. I saw another batch file here that I want to have a look at that's install.bat. Let's have a look at that. All right, so this is just the updater file that the Rust server tool creates for us. This is what runs in the background if you were to click on install or update the server. This is the file that would run. So I do really like what they've done here. This is a really good tool. It's kind of funny actually because it feels like it uses a lot of the information that I've explained on a lot of my other tutorials. They've just made it a lot fancier, which I can definitely appreciate. So to the developer of this tool, Los Granada, I think you've done a bang up job. I think you did really good on this one. Keep up the good work. I imagine this is a passion project for you, so it's going to be going through some changes over the next little while. And I'm excited to see the changes that you decide to go with. All right, that's it for Rust Server Tool from CodeFling. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Of course, if you haven't already done so, make sure you subscribe to the channel. It helps me out a lot. And do me a favor and smash that thumbs up button for me. All right, thank you so much for watching today's video. I put out a brand new video every Friday at 5 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. So until next Friday, I hope you're staying safe and taking care of each other. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all next week.